So I don't really have a plan for this video tonight. Um, well, no, that's a lot. I have a couple ideas because I just, I'm kind of running out of stories to tell about myself in these kind of video diary things. Um, but most importantly, I'm still not doing great at the moment. Um, today's dad's birthday and you know I should be really happy because it's a celebratory day but I just feel really down and out of everything I don't know it's a, it's it's that drained feeling again of just wanting everything to stop for a minute so I can rest even though I've had plenty plenty of rest like on the weekend on Saturday I spent 14 to 20 of those hours sleeping because you know that's that's what I do I sleep to escape my problems and, you know I always wonder um, you know I see those questions on reddit if all of a sudden the need to sleep or the want to sleep was gone what would you do with all that time and I kind of go holy shit well what what would I do without sleep that's an escape for me um, see I'm not doing perfect I kind of feel th things are going down and you know I, I wonder should I you know the smart thing to do would be to go see someone about it go see my psychologist again who was I've said this before she's she was awesome she's the best one I've had but like I still don't like the idea of psychologists I, d I don't know why I don't know why and it's, it's not like they especially the one I was going to see she was lovely it's not like she was a bad psychologist it's not like she wasn't doing anything I think it's just because like I don't know how to explain it like when I do these video diaries I'm talking to myself um, you know sometimes without a camera if I'm trying to explain something to myself I have like a mini debate in my head over it as if I was trying to explain it to someone else because that kind of proves on if I'm knowledgeable about what my opinion or my belief is I pretend someone questioning that opinion or belief okay well if that's my opinion or belief what would they say to question me would I be able to counter that would does my opinion still stand once they start asking questions and you know it seems kind of stupid but I am able to have those conversations with myself and not feel awkward and as I've talked to the camera it's become more natural like the first couple of videos I did it felt so weird talking to the camera but now I just kind of pretend it's not there or I don't try to think about the fact that I'm videoing myself like it's, it's hard it's hard to explain it's really hard to explain I'm trying to get this dog this dog yes you to stop licking me stop it Arr. yeah it's just it's it's hard to explain I guess maybe because you have to become more vulnerable when you're with a psychologist whereas I'm um, choosing whether or not to be vulnerable in these videos like I know my limit no one's pushing me I can choose what what I want to talk about and what I don't want to talk about um you know I don't feel as awkward crying in front of a camera than what I do if I was crying in front of someone else like I really don't I'm, I'm a massive crybaby I've said this a million times but um oh Oscar I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you stop it stop it sorry um you know, it, it, I, I don't like crying in front of people. I'm very apologetic when I cry in front of people. I'm very apologetic anyway. Um, but no, it's just, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. I, I, I do find these videos are helping. I guess it's, you know, the reason I started them was that I've been told multiple times by doctors and psychologists and my parents that I need to keep some sort of diary like how was your day what's something you're grateful for what's something that you challenged you um mm, stop sorry <laughs> he's, oh, you're, a, you're a little devil aren't you look at he's a little devil hmm? <laughs> I think it's also because I've, I've got my boys here um and I'm able to kind of distract myself when I'm petting them, although they distract me by licking and that annoys me. Petting, fine. Um, licking me, not okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was meant, I'm meant to keep these kind of daily diaries to track my mental health and I suck at it. 
and so I started doing voice recording diaries and like, okay, that started. That was okay. Oh, sorry, I'm tired. Yeah. And that was okay. But I find that these video diaries are probably the most helpful. It's like I've I've seen people that have been watching these. Like I see I see the I see the view count. I know one of them is Jack. I know one of them he's he's supporting me by being my viewer. Um but I didn't expect for anyone to find these. Like I don't know how anyone found these. Like I haven't put hashtags or whatever you, whatever the YouTube equivalent of a hashtag is. Any tags in general, like, and I know it's very uh, what would be the word? Stupid to put something on the internet and go, oh, but I never went, meant for anyone to see it. Well, if it's on the internet, someone's gonna see it. But I just I thought with YouTube being such a vast media platform, and unless you're actively seeking for people to try and view your things. It wouldn't happen um, but I guess for me putting things on YouTube like these video diaries it's putting a piece of me on there that's not gonna ever truly leave if that makes sense like I'm not planning on anything happening to me at this point but if anything were to happen to me these video diaries are an explanation of my mental health and kind of what's going on in my life, what have been the big things that have happened in my life and how I felt about those things. Um, it's like writing letters to yourself, if that sounds so stupid and weird. But yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. Anyway, what I was planning on doing is, Oscar, I swear to God. Hmm? What are you doing? <sighs> He's just like non-stop licking me. Won't stop. Stop it. Oh. Oh. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, you're a cutie. I took a really cute photo of him on the weekend. <laughs> He's got his ears up and he has the biggest shit-eating grin on his face and his eyes are kind of squinted. He, he, look, he looks like an evil little shit, don't you? <laughs> You've just got the biggest shit-eating grin on your face, don't you? <laughs> Good boy, I love you. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a piece of, it's a piece of me. It's a, you know, if YouTube is still around, I don't see it going anywhere. Boo boo, not you too. You know, if YouTube's still around in twenty years, and if I ever have children, um, it's a, th this is, this is the time where. If I have grandchildren or great grandchildren, they're gonna have a piece of me at certain ages. Whereas, you know, my great grandparents, I don't have any photos of them. I don't really know who they are. Um, even my grandparents, you know, I only know minimal things, whether that be because my grandparents, most of my grandparents passed away at, when I was a young age, or I'm trying to learn more about my nanny now. But, um, you know, sometimes. I know Dad says he, there are certain things he doesn't, like, want to tell me about his childhood or his teenage years, whether they be that he was, like, a naughty little shit of a kid. Like, before I was trying to remember the uh, remember the book of the quote, tell me about the rabbits, George, because um, I've been watching TV shows and movies and whenever someone goes to shoot someone in the back of the head and they're trying to distract them, I always think of that scene. And I couldn't remember what the book was. The book is of Mice of Men. And I said that to mum and she went, oh, I read that in high school. So when dad came upstairs, I went, oh, dad, did you read Of Mice and Men in high school? And he went, I didn't read in high school. And I was like, all right, cool. So, um, you know, he got expelled for punching a teacher, I think it was. Like, the, te the teacher, I think, grabbed him first, like. I don't remember the story correctly. Don't don't take my word as gospel of what, how that happened. But yeah, you know, like he he knows he wasn't the greatest kid in school. Um, I've forgotten where I'm going with this. This is this is a piece of me. This is a piece of me at age nineteen, and it's going to be interesting. To I haven't watched any of my videos back. I don't know if I ever will because I find that cringy watching them back. I like hear my voice and I'm like, oh my god, is that what I sound like? And then I see my face. I'm like, oh my god, is that what I look like? Um, you know, double chin and everything. 
don't you love it? Um, but yeah, in a year's time, two years, three years time, um, I'm going to look back on these videos and see progress. Am I going to be right where I was? Am I going to be able to show my grandkids or my nieces and nephews or my own children? You know, one of the things I fear about having my own children is that they'll have my mental health problems. And my parents have done the absolute best they can, you know. But if I were to have a child with the same mental health problems as myself, and I was still struggling as much as I am with my mental health problems, I just don't see that going well. And I'm scared that I'm scared that they I'm scared they'd have mental health problems. I don't want to have a child that has mental health problems like me. That's that, that's the best way of putting it cuz it friggin sucks. You, you know. Um and I read something the other day that really upset me cuz it's very true. Um it was along the lines of stop licking me. No. It was along the lines of how do you look at the woman who put so much effort into giving birth to you and say, I don't want this life. I wish you hadn't given birth to me. How do, how do I do that? You know, I have, I have done that. Like I haven't turned around and gone, I wish, I wish I wasn't born. I haven't gone that, but like, how do, how do I go to a parent? And mum, mum went through hell to have me. It's, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't an easy, it wasn't easy giving birth. It wasn't easy getting pregnant. You know, she was in danger. I was in danger. It, it, you know, how do I turn to her after... And she waited so long to have me. Like, she was told after Adrian she could never have another child again. So, you know, she'd practically given up hope when I was like, hey, hi, how you doing? Um, but, you know, how do I turn to her and go, I wish you hadn't. I wish you hadn't have been able to have me. That's horrible. How dare I say that? And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough because that's sometimes how I do feel. Not all the time. But, um, yeah, it's not easy. Anyway, what I was going to do in this video, after I got into many are off topic, is I bought this book a long time ago. I think, uh, well, no, not a long time ago. It was like 2018. Oh. And it's got a lot of questions in there that I think will give more under more of an understanding of who I am. Um... Some of these will be completely opinion ba opinion based, and with opinions, it it's never meant to. My opinions never meant to offend anyone. You know, if I'm gonna offend you, I'm gonna come out and say this is meant to offend you. But you know, it's th that's never the intention. My opinions, as all opinions, are based on how you've been brought up and the facts and the knowledge that you personally have. Doesn't mean it's correct. You know, I might say some things that I think are fact. No, it's not true. Y you know, um. But th this might give an idea of who I am. And you know what will be interesting is, again, if if these videos stick around 10 years down the track to look back and go, well, I still have these opinions. Because these opinions that I have now would not be what I had when I was 9 years old. I don't think I could have. But even when I was 15 years old, I don't think these opinions would be the same as what I had back then. So I've opened to a random page. It's actually my fans on. It's been flicking the book for me, so it's completely random now. Um, and I'm just going to answer a few of these questions and see. I'm reading through some of them and uh, here's, here's one. Okay, number 1430. What profession do you respect? And again, this is completely bias opinion based and you can tell it's bias because I think teachers need way more respect than what they get. I think they need to be held at the highest regard. Like, yes, I understand that doctors save lives and I, and I do get that there are people out there who are protecting me and my life. I get that there's people who will one day save my life. Um, but in my opinion, and this is very biased because mum's a teacher and a lot of my family members are teachers, you know, I kind of look at all that and go... Without teachers, these people wouldn't know how to do what they do. Like, there's professors that teach brain surgeons how to do it. You know, 
so I think any and I, and people could say teachers and professors are on two different levels like people say primary school and high school teachers are on two different levels but I guess like for me if you don't have a good enough primary school teacher that can can doesn't mean it will can affect how you go in high school can affect what kind of career you have can affect you know a lot of things it's like that domino effect so I, I think teachers to me are the profession that have the most respect in my mind you know I see what mum does and not every teacher is like mum but um you know in the in the school holidays which in Australia is five weeks we went in about eight or nine eight or nine times to do school work to try and set up she's a year one teacher and you know to set up and make sure that these it, it was all ready to go and I know not a lot of teachers do that you know I saw teachers that were only going in one or two days before school ended I think mum only had the week of Christmas and New Year off and then she went in once or twice for the rest of the holidays for each week and I went I went all but one day with her um and, you know, she was printing off things and she was cutting things out. She was trying to make her classroom look great. I helped. I, I'm really proud of myself. Um, I saw on Pinterest, um, infinity take, uh, reading takes you to infinity and beyond with a Buzz Lightyear. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. So I um, chose a wall and I printed out all the letters and I laminated them and I cut them all out and I cut out the Buzz Lightyear and I laminated him and I did Zerg and I did the aliens from Toy Story and I did some stars and it looked really awesome in the end and I was really proud of that because like it, it I put it in like the little reading quarter where the kids go and I thought like yes this is also biased I thought it was really cute um and you know that what that just doing that was a lot of friggin effort like cutting out those letters especially cutting out Buzz Lightyear and Zerg and the aliens like I'm really precise and mum was like it's okay if there's a little bit of white and I was like no it's not okay um but that was a lot of effort right there and yet mum was having to do it like she did so many different signs and like she did her doors and she did her windows and she did a wall and you know, a few years ago, she painted this massive, massive painting on um, pieces of paper. So she got out those pieces of paper and stuck them up again. You know, she has a Christmas theme and everything. And like, I've seen the effort mum puts in. Like when she comes home of an afternoon, she doesn't come home till four o'clock. So school finishes at like 3.15, 3.20. She doesn't come home until 4, 4.30. And then when she comes home, she probably spends another hour on the computer doing school work maybe another two two and a half hours if it's really busy and then she'll go back on after dinner you know on the weekend she spends like at least majority of Sunday like I'm usually I'm usually asleep when she's awake doing the school work so you know there's how uh that's how productive I am um but you know she spends most of Sunday and Saturday afternoon doing school work and you know same with the school holidays like I've heard people say to mum, oh, school teacher, wow, you get a lot of holidays. No, like for some school teachers, they take that holiday and, and like good on them, I guess, but not mum. Um, you know, she's planning on going holidays this year, but even with her going on holiday, she's not going for the whole two weeks. She's only going for one week so that she can come back for the other week and do schoolwork for the whole week. So, you know, let, let, let's just say they only get one week off of each term and then you know it, it's it's not as I guess it depends on your passion for it though because you know I see other teachers and they don't put in as much effort as my mum does and again that's a very biased opinion I don't live with those teachers I don't know what they do when they get home but I know what mum does when she gets home and I remember when I was little you know we can't go anywhere I've got work to do oh can you go downstairs and play I've got work to do and you know like it, it was just the normal that mum was always busy like she used to not come home I remember at one point I don't remember what class she was teaching she's always been on like kindergarten year one but I think I was around when I was eight or nine maybe and she she wouldn't leave school until five o'clock and then she'd come home and keep doing work for another hour or two she'd have dinner and then keep doing work like it was friggin' ridiculous especially report time she's constantly doing work so there's my little rant about teachers um 
Wow, some of these questions are really weird. <laughs> As some of them I don't feel comfortable. Okay, here's one. Again, completely opinion-based. Um, do you think society has become too PC, which is politically correct? Yes and no. So yes, in some areas we've become politically correct to a point where it's respectful, but also no, because like it's very hard to keep the balance. You know, I see it in a lot of different aspects of life that it leans more to one side and then we try to make it better. So we start rushing to the other side and all of a sudden it's leaning far over to the other side and just doesn't end up working. So, you know, I was reading something about cultural appropriation today and the person was explaining the difference between cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation. And that was really interesting to read. Like, for an example, this was the example they used in the post. They said, box braids. If you wear box braids because you think they're pretty, that's fine. If you wear box braids to, uh, to uh, what was the term they use? To make yourself look more like that culture for like wearing a certain headdress to a party or a festival or something. That's not okay. And that was a really interesting read because I got where they were coming from. And then someone in the comments kind of went to the extreme and I found it quite funny. They were saying, you know, if everything's cultural appreciation, then you shouldn't eat any foods that aren't from your country or use any inventions that aren't from your country. And I found that really funny because no, then that would be, uh, that would make life worse. But as long as it's only a minority that'll be affected by it, that's when we're going to say, no, that's not okay. Um, not always, but like if we said complete cultural appropriation is bad you're not allowed to take anything from other, any other cultures unless you're a part of that culture well we'd go okay let's let's you know if you're not indian you can't eat indian food if you're not from russia you can't use russian inventions or you can't use uh chinese or japanese inventions and everyone would go hold on hold on hold on that's not what we meant but you know it's because it starts becoming inconvenient to them if you do that um, I think I'll do one more. What's the biggest blooper you've never lived down? I've got a funny story about this. So somewhere lost out there on the internet, I know where it is is videos of me when I was 15 and trying to become a YouTuber. As in, like, you know, YouTubers like Dan is not on fire, but he's known as Daniel Howe now and Amazing Phil. And this was back in 2015, Lily Singh. You know, those kind of ones that do those skit videos, like uh, Jenna Marbles might be another good, uh, good one to mention. Um, that's who I aspired to be as a YouTuber. I wanted to do like those funny skit videos where I like dress up and pretend to be different people. Um, so out there on the internet is a video of me, uh, how to get out of doing dishes I think was the video title or how to get out of doing chores if you find it congratulations um I might watch it on here one day as so that oh it's so cringe now uh anyway um a skit in the video was you know how you get out of doing dishes you break the dishes because that makes sense um so my plan was I had the video of me and Hannah were making it and we had the video camera and I had a pillows on the floor and I went and found online a plate crashing like breaking sound effect so the plan was I was gonna drop the plates onto the pillow no harm no foul except one of them landed on another one and it cracked. You just see me. I look up with sheer terror on my face. I'm like, because oh. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, I just broke a plate. Ah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if never lived down would be the right term for that one. But um, 
when I think of bloopers because I was making a video for that one. That's the that's the one that comes to I've done so many other dumb things as well. Um, you know, I can think of one for my sister. The one for my sister was this was oh five years ago. She she was late teens. It's not like she was a little kid. We were watching TV and we we're watching a football game and when they kind of go back to the center square or the center center oval, um, they put their sponsors over the grasses, um, pictures and stuff, uh, using the camera and, and things like that. And Asian goes, how do they get out there and paint the different logos on so quickly? And even I, who's five years younger, I was just like, you what? <laughs> and then my favourite one is for Jack. I've never let him live this down. Whenever we talk about math, I mentioned this one. We were doing Pythagoras theorem. Is that the one where it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Um... The, the triangle one shows how much I use that in my daily life. Uh, anyway, so we're looking at a square and it said find the hypotenuse. Oh God, this math language is hard. Find, find, find the length of the longest line. I'm pretty sure that's called the hypotenuse. Um, and he's looking at this square and it's got, a, it's got a line down the middle of it. So it's a square with a diagonal line going from corner to corner. And he goes... How can there be a hypotenuse in a square? And I look at him, I'm like, are you for real? And I point out to, I cover half the square, so it makes it into a triangle. And I'm like, can you see it now? He's like, oh, so I've never let him, let him live it down. That two triangles pushed together make the shape of a square. <laughs> I always bring it up whenever we're talking about math and he talks about how he's not good at math and I'm like oh yeah so you know how a square can't be two triangles and can't find hypotenuse hmm yeah that was a good one uh yeah so that was that was a very long and windy video I'm, I'm always scared to put my opinions out on the internet uh you know I'm not very opinion based or political based on my on my social media accounts because I don't want to offend people you know I don't I'm not a confrontational person as well so I love a good debate but especially in text message where or like in uh just in messages where I have to interpret what they're saying and interpret their tone of voice and the way they take it, they mean it that's where I start having issues um but yeah, again, my opinion's completely biased, um, may be wrong, you know, I'm always willing to learn. So one thing I love about debates, uh, about, about, about opinions, is I learn new things, like, definitely over the, like, Jack and I have lots of different opinions, especially political-based opinions, I always love having a good debate with him over our political based opinions because I bring up good points for him he brings up good points for me and you know I've learned things that I don't think I would have learned had we not had those I'm getting tired political debate all right I'm tired AF bye